Good morning guys, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today I thought we'd do something a little different. Uh, this is going to be more of a experiment, theory, analysis, uh, engineering type video. Now uh, the uh, motivation behind this is my last couple of videos sparked some interesting discussion on what probably is the most mysterious compound, you know, automotive lubricant uh, chemical compound out there. That's dielectric grease. There seems to be a lot of uh, varying opinions. Of what this stuff is? Does it help make contact? Is it? Does it help? Uh, you know, thermal conductivity to cool. Um, electrical components. Um, is it better than or worse than thermal paste in some applications? A lot of different questions out there and if you go on forums man you'll just get carried away and start running around in circles. So I figured you know what let's uh, design an experiment here get some real numbers look at a real vehicle and uh, in these cases numbers speak louder than words so uh, from here we'll look at the problem you know from an engineering standpoint come up with a solution an experiment to test the proposed solution and uh, we'll see where we go I think it's gonna be a lot of fun so when doing an analysis like this you know solving an engineering problem we need to be very specific in what our goals are and how we're going to go about determining you know how to solve that problem we have to do very specific experiments to collect specific data and analyze it in in a way that will help us solve the initial problem okay so here we're going to focus on you know the initial problem is the ignition control module the ICM fails with time due to excessive heat okay I think everyone can agree on that uh, especially the older vehicles you know from after they switch to transistorized ignition the HEI you know GM um, type ignitions <clears throat> now here for a test subject I have an old distributor off of my 1989 Mazda MPV. Now this thing is very similar in design. It's not a bypass ignition system, but uh, the principle is the same. It has an ignition control module, which uh, you, uh, I obviously uh, tore apart, but just so you can understand how this works. So this system has nothing to do with the engine computer in terms of timing control uh, it's all done in this brain there's a vacuum advance right here okay and that pulls on the actuator and that uh, turns these little metal uh, there, it's actually a magnet right here permanent magnet and then when these poles on the reluctor ring pass by the magnet here see there are four of them, it's a four cylinder engine the pickup coil which is part of the ICM gets pulsed, you know, pulses in here and then the circuit board which I actually took out so I'll show you the this is all it is little guy like this, it's an aluminum backing plate okay there's a little circuit board here and your main transistor which turns the ignition coil primary current on and off and we'll actually do some bench tests on this thing it's pretty neat <clears throat> so like I said you know the pickup coil sends pulses to this little circuit board gets conditioned and uh, at the end of the chain the transistor turns on and off at the right time to control the primary winding of the ignition coil. Okay, so in my experience, this is the second distributor. Right now, the the van is on its third distributor, and what fails is exactly the 
ignition control module because this thing sits right on the head uh, everything's hot in here you know you can see some somebody already applied the white the white thermal paste so this had the good stuff but still no matter what you do this thing burns up uh, it's burned up every hundred thousand miles so at hundred thousand miles at two hundred thousand miles I had to replace this and right now it's at you know two hundred and forty so it's still going strong but this is a repeat failure due to excessive heat that's that's all there is to it so um, I think this is a good test subject since we can see that the problem occurs here and uh, this is a good system you know a good test subject to analyze so we all agree on the problem okay I seem failure due to heat now the proposed solution here's where all the uh, you know differing opinions and arguments start up so the solution you know proposed by even factor you know the factory solution is to apply a thermal paste or dielectric grease or silicone paste uh, basically apply something to the base to this metal base which screws directly onto the distributor onto the body to help cool that module to help cool the electronics so and then you know we can go a lot of different directions from here what is better dielectric grease or thermal paste uh, the ideal scenario would be if this you know aluminum plate was just welded to the distributor body right I mean uh, you can't get better thermal transfer than if it's just a solid block of metal the paste is supposed to theoretically fill in the voids in here you can see there are some imperfections and uh, make better contact from here to the distributor body okay uh, that may be true uh, so people kinda get hung up on that you know that's that's the goal here is to make this heat transfer better but I think in this case we have to take a step back and take a look at the overall problem and that's where we come to uh, the third part here experimental design so the goal of our experiment is going to be <clears throat> part one is to analyze the operating temperature of the ICM on the vehicle okay in its environment where where it lives now we want to see what the best case scenario could be and the worst case scenario uh, and that will be kind of an, you know, an ideal uh, how low can this temperature be in the best case scenario where let's say it's welded to the distributor body so the temperature of this thing will be equal to the distributor body you can't get better than that and we'll discuss why that is but basically second law of thermodynamics heat you know goes from hot objects to cold objects and we can't get any colder than the cool object okay which is in this case is supposedly the distributor body so we don't even know we don't know that <laughs> you know is the how hot does this thing get if this you know gets to uh, well we'll take measurements okay I don't want to guess but if this if the temperature of the distributor body alone in operation is hotter than whatever the electronics here can sustain long term then then that's it no thermal paste or dielectric grease or anything will help the situation we have to relocate this module because this environment is just too hot to begin with it doesn't matter you know how good the heat transfer is you know thermodynamics tells us it just won't work so we have to keep that in mind we'll do an analysis there and then uh, you know part two that what I just said can this thermal paste or dielectric grease lower the ICM temp which is our you know the solution to our problem we want to cool this thing down and by how much okay if it lowers it by a couple degrees it's you know what's the point <laughs> it's like we want it significantly cooler uh, to make the electronics last longer so part of the experiment will be measuring the temperature of the distributor body after the engine is nice and hot alright now that we have that background 
in our minds, let's look at <clears throat> the actual details of designing this experiment. What our exact goal is and how we're going to go about determining uh, these parameters. So, again, our goal is to analyze the operating temperature of the ignition control module. The, uh, the most direct way to do this would be to place thermocouples on the ignition control module itself and the distributor body, okay? But in this case, since the ICM lives inside, it lives literally, you know, inside here, inside the rotors, is all closed. Um, that's not the most feasible way to do this. Okay, so the direct way in this case is not as easy as uh, we would want. There are always multiple ways to to do the same thing here. So this is uh, why I think engineering is really really cool because you can come up with different ways to solve the same problem. So the in indirect way to uh, analyze our operating temperature of the ICM is to do an analysis of power consumption and heat transfer. Okay, so you know, what, what system are we looking at? So let's say this is our distributor body. You know, it's attached to the engine, the head and everything. And here we can easily measure the temperature of the distributor body. We'll use an infrared thermometer maybe verify with the thermocouple, you know, the voltmeter, um, no big deal. Now the internal ignition control module, we can't quite get to that while, you know, the car is running, but we can do an estimate of how hot this thing is getting by how much power it's consuming, okay? Now, you know, that that's we can uh, do some measurements, you know, voltage drop, current flow, and calculate how many watts this thing is consuming, okay? Um, you know, because you can always guess like, oh, you know, it's an old system, it's really inefficient, it's, uh, there's 5 amps flowing through the coil at 12 volts, so you're getting 60 watts. So it's like a 60 watt light bulb in there. Um, maybe. Uh, but we'll actually do a measurement and get an exact number, so uh, we're not guessing there. And since this is consuming power, that power has to be its turned to heat. You know, any electrical device will, in, you know, after it's done doing its work, uh, then the result is always a heat, heat flow. So we need to dissipate that same amount of heat, you know, if this thing is using 10 watts, we need to dissipate 10 watts of heat from the ICM. And here is where uh, we'll have to use heat transfer analysis to see what the best case scenario is uh, for transferring heat from here to here. So, <clears throat> you know, based on the difference between these two temperatures, the heat flow is going to change. And this interface here, that's, that's what this whole uh, problem is all about. If we can improve this interface, you know, let's say these are bonded really well, you know, like a weld, these two temperatures are going to be equal because it'll be basically one solid block of metal, okay? Now if we make an air gap here, uh, the heat transfer will be much, much lower. Now again, uh, with heat transfer, you have to keep in mind there are three types. You know, we have conduction, which uh, we're concentrating on, you know, that interface. There's also convection. So basically, let this thing sit in some ambient air, and, uh, you know, the air molecules will heat up here, and they will kind of start rising and so heat will be carried away just by the air molecules or the, the third one is radiation so that is energy transfer by electromagnetic waves so let's say you're sitting by a fire you know you can feel the heat there that's just electromagnetic waves uh, in the infrared you can actually feel those 
Uh, same with, you know, sun. And even if you have a bright headlight, you, you put your hand in front of it, it'll heat it right up. And it's not convection, it's not conduction, so it must be radiation. But in this case, you know, this thing doesn't heat up red hot, so uh, we won't look at radiation. But convection and conduction, uh, we'll have to look at. So, we're going to use the indirect method. The power consumption will actually be the easy part. We can measure both current and uh, voltage drop to this uh, ignition control module, but the heat transfer might get a little involved and uh, might have to dust off the college textbook, you know. Uh, <laughs> I did take a course on heat transfer, but um, man, I gotta tell you, you know, after almost 10 years, it's, uh, it's been a little while, so we'll see how far we can get with that.